Hello everyone. I'm, uh, I haven't made a video for a while because I've been really busy with other things. But I'm making a video today about what's going to be happening in October here in the UK. I'm here in Parliament Square. Um, so as some of you may know, there's going to be lots of things going on uh, from the 1st of October. And I'm basically saying you need to be coming down and participating. So there's a big demonstration. There's going to be tens of thousands of people in London on Saturday the 1st. And the plan is people stay um, and come out on the 2nd and on the 3rd and then come and occupy Westminster, this square here, Parliament Square, every day uh, after that until the government uh, concedes that it will stop uh, drilling, licensing and what have you for oil and gas. So, yeah, I made a video about three years ago now, just before April 2019, and I think about 40, 50,000 people watched it. And I was going, hey guys, you know, <laughs> if you want to stop the climate crisis, it actually isn't that complicated. You need thousands of people to come to London and you sit in the roads and you occupy the central London day after day. And at a certain point, the government concedes and will make a response. And I remember at the time people going, no, you know, no, 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 it won't work or, you know, tried that or blah, blah, blah. Anyway, as you probably know, it did work and 10,000 people went, came to London and I think there was one, one and a half thousand arrests, something like that. And they declared climate emergency and everyone's going, oh my God, you know, <laughs> wasn't that amazing? And I was going like, well, yeah, it's not complicated, right? You know, I'm here in front of this building it's just another building, right? It's Parliament, but it's just another building. It's just bricks and mortar. And there's a bunch of people in there and they have a certain amount of power. And the important thing is, is it's only a limited amount of power. So in case you're feeling a bit skeptical, I'll just suggest, you know, 50, 100,000 people came into this square every day for about two or three weeks, then they would have to respond to your demand. I mean, this has happened a thousand times in recent history. There's nothing unusual about it. It happens all the time. And the only issue... The only... The only issue is... is where's the tipping point, right? So... Yeah, I'm going to tell you where the tipping point is. So 3,000 people come into this square, you know, day after day, and they cause disruption for one or two or three weeks and there's about 3,000 arrests let's say then you've got a good 50-50 chance that the Tory government is going to do a U-turn and you might be saying well you know the Tories they're all powerful that's all bollocks with all due respect right they just made a U-turn about two weeks ago you know, they weren't going to give subsidies. They weren't going to cap the energy prices. And then they realized they had to, so they did. So our job is to come down on the first, bring the sleeping bag and, um, and don't go home. It's as simple as that. So I talked to a bunch of judges and uh, QCs, these top lawyers. And they said, to cut long story short, they said it's unconstitutional for the government to engage in activities that take us over 1.5 degrees. So I'm assuming everyone who watches this video knows that if we go over 1.5 degrees, um, yeah, if we carry on digging up oil and gas, then we're going to go over 1.5. I mean, that's like super obvious, isn't it? So. If the government continues with this legislation to open, what is it now, 130 new oil fields, they're basically engaging in unconstitutional activity. And then you might be going, well, you yeah, know, that's all very well, Roger, you know, a few judges making some private comments. But I think yesterday they 
published in the Times a letter with about 120 of them saying, saying this and saying that if we go over 1.5, it undermines the rule of law. Now, between me and you, <laughs> what that actually means is the government's committing treason because undermining the rule of law is about as serious a crime as you can imagine. So the reason I'm telling you this is because, there's, again, you know, there's no guarantees, but there's a good 50-50 chance a bunch of judges and QCs will have the guts to get up in October and make a public statement and say, actually, lawyers shouldn't be prosecuting climate protesters. They shouldn't be putting people in jail. I mean, yesterday they put 56 people in jail, I think. Um, everything's happening with the Queen, by the way, so <laughs> I don't think it's in the papers, but that's more people in jail, I think, than any time since the suffragettes. Um, the judiciary have lost 50% of their funding the court systems had over the last 10 years. I think they're all out on strike. They're not happy people. They don't want to be putting dozens of ordinary people, you know, grandmothers and, you know, what have you, in, in prison. And they're going to make a statement. It's a matter of when, not if. And they're going to make a statement, they're more likely to make a statement if we get a critical mass of people coming down in October. So, you know, that's the general proposition here. Um, I'm going to go through a few, yeah, embellishments really, because um, a lot of people think, oh, we tried that, it didn't work, or I did that once and it didn't work. So, I'm just going to have a little look at my notes and then I'm going to come back <laughs> with my replies to those points, OK? Just uh, bear with me a sec. Yeah, so basically when, when, we, when we set up Extinction Rebellion three or four years ago, you know, everyone said, or a lot of people said, oh, you know, it doesn't work, it doesn't work sort of thing, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it did work and 200,000 people joined XR around that time, around April 2019. And then I think everyone went out in October and nothing really changed. And then since then it's been like, well, we tried that and it didn't work. Um, so the reason it didn't work, okay, with all due respect, is um, because there weren't enough people, okay? The reason it didn't work because there wasn't enough people. Um, I think in October 2019 there was 1,800 arrests. Well, it wasn't enough. You know, just to use a little analogy, if, if you go on strike and only 10% of the workers come, go out on strike and it doesn't work, you don't go, well, strikes don't work. You just go, well, not enough people went on strike. I mean, the RMT's going out on strike. They're always winning their strikes, right? Because a lot of them go out on, on strike. So we all know strikes work, but they don't always work because you need to get enough people. And we know how many people we need. We need about 3,000 people. It's totally doable. Um, but there's something, there's something else going on which I want to talk about, which is a bit more tricky, which is this idea of, well, it didn't work or I did my bit, you know. I came out in 2019, you know. I was in the peace movement in the 1980s, you know. I used to go on demonstrations. I don't do that anymore. It's like, we're in an emergency. This is not like a little campaign about a polluted river. This is a complete emergency. And it's not going to get any better. And it's the whole world. You don't have the option to go where well, I did my bit because it's just going to get worse and worse and also there's all this talk about justice isn't there you know I'm in social justice climate justice there's like what was it 30 million people in Pakistan having to leave their homes in the last three weeks it's like you have to come down to Parliament and sort this situation out if you believe 
in any semblance of justice. It's like, it just has to be done, doesn't it? It's not like I'm so privileged and entitled that I can make a choice. You don't have a choice. Or at least if you think you believe in fairness and justice, it's a no-brainer, so you have to come down to London. Regardless of whether we win, right? Because it has to be done. So, don't give me this, um, I did my bit rubbish. Okay, it's just like, yeah, it's beyond, it's a beyond fucked idea, right? This is a total emergency. Millions of people are dying. Billions of people are gonna get displaced. The least you can do is come down to London. I know, I know this isn't like, you know, people don't like admitting this, but being involved in resistance is actually quite a lot of fun. And, um, you know, with these 56 people who just gone to prison, I think it's a fair bet they're actually feeling quite at peace at this moment because they've done what has to be done. And you've got two options, haven't you? You're going to come down to London or you're not. And as some of you know, you know, I used to do, I used to be a social scientist. And from a social scientific point of view, um, 90% certain that those of you that don't come down to London are going to be a lot more miserable than those of you who do. Because actually entering into resistance, you know, coming and sitting in the square, it makes you feel like you're actually doing something, right? It's really miserable deciding something doesn't work and just sitting there waiting to die or whatever you're doing. You know, we've been given this gift of life and You've got a responsibility and an opportunity to live it to the full. And at this moment in history, living life to the full is to get a grip and go, right, we're going to do something. You know, this is a big adventure. We're going to come down to London and I'm going to phone my mates up and we're going to do it. And maybe it won't work, but what the fuck? It doesn't matter at the end of the day, does it? The main thing is you actually get out there and do what you have to do. Otherwise, you're just shitting on all those people in Pakistan and going, oh, I've got something else to do that day. And maybe that feel, makes you feel guilty and maybe you feel a bit put on. But I don't actually care, really, you know. I'm actually being respectful towards you. That's how I look upon it, because I'm just being straight with you. It's an objective situation. You don't sit on your arse when the whole world's about to collapse. And... Um, you know, I'm just surrounded, by the way, by all these people who are in this queue, you know, this eight, is it eight mile queue, I've just been told. There's an eight mile queue to go and see the Queen. And you think, what's, what's all that about? Well, you know, all these people, you know, they all love the Queen because, you know, rightly or wrongly, they think she stood for something, right? She stood for resilience and service and, you know, dedication to the well-being of the British people and all the rest of it. And whether you agree with that or not isn't really the issue. The point is, is all these people's hopes, all these people's like expectations of the future, is just gonna turn into dust, you know? It's just gonna turn to shit. Unless a critical mass of people come down and change the course of history. And there's only a certain number of people who are gonna do that. And it's a fair bet that it's going to be you watching this video. So what I want you to do is, is share this video with all those XR people. You know, those 200,000 people out there. Make sure they get this video. You know, maybe share another video if you don't like this video, okay? <laughs> Whatever. But just get it out there that this is the next step. You know, we've had COVID. Uh, everyone's been miserable and now it's time to get back out on the streets and get on with the job. Um, yeah, anyway, so I just want to tell you about this, you know, I interview and talk to loads of people, as you may know, and it's really interesting. And every now and again, I talk to someone who sort of blows my mind away, you know, and I want to tell you about this uh, Canadian, you know, this indigenous guy who's, he's part of the chief sort of system in, in Canada. It goes back to, you know, 1700s. 
Anyway, what he said to me was, he said, you know, when, when they build a pipeline across their, you know, across their lands, he said, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. You know, you're going to sit there and get completely screwed over or you resist and you get completely screwed over. And they choose to resist. And that really affected me because it made me realise how privileged and entitled I am and most probably you are watching this video that you can even think you have a choice here. You know, you can think that you can be a good person, you know, in solidarity, all that stuff, and not actually go into resistance. So I just want to say to you, there's not a chance in hell, right, you can be in solidarity with those people that are getting fucked over, unless you actually get off your arse and start changing things. And what I've said to you in this video is, you know, unless you've got a better idea, in which case that's all cool, but unless you've got a better idea, you need to get everyone down to London and just get on with it because we've got three years, haven't we? Whatever it is. Um, so yeah, that's my bet. I'll see you in London on the first. Bye.